Let's go to our chief White House correspondent, Jim Acosta. Jim, once again, Nancy Pelosi speaks and the president goes off on a tear. That's right, Wolf. It really got nasty over here at the White House earlier today as the president went off on the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi after she said that she hopes Mr. Trump's aides and family stage an intervention, as she called it. Then this afternoon, in that wild exchange with reporters, the president described Pelosi as, quote, crazy as he dubbed himself an extremely stable genius. And in front of the cameras, the president then put his own top aides on the spot to talk about how stable he really is. So today I'm announcing trading barbs with his chief Democratic nemesis, President Trump took a swipe at House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, saying she can't comprehend the U.S. trade deal with Mexico and Canada now pending before Congress. You know, she's a mess. Look, let's face it, she doesn't understand it. The president then got even more personal, relitigating his confrontation one day earlier with Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, complete with schoolyard nicknames. I was extremely calm. I was probably even more so in that room. So I walked into the cabinet room. You had the, uh, the group, crying Chuck, crazy Nancy. I tell you what, I've been watching her, and I have, I have been watching her for a long period of time. She's not the same person. Uh, she's lost it. The verbal tussling comes one day after the president lashed out in the Rose Garden, a performance Democrats derided as another Trump temper tantrum. I don't do cover-ups. Pelosi appears to have gotten under Mr. Trump's skin, referring to the two eyes, impeachment, there's no question. The White House is just crying out for impeachment. And intervention, a new Pelosi trigger word. I pray for the president of the United States. I wish that his family or his administration or his staff would have an intervention for the good of the country. The president turned to his own aides to back him up. One after one, top officials were called on by the president to reassure the public Mr. Trump was calm in his meeting with Democrats. You were very calm. Kellyanne's right, you were very calm. Very calm and straightforward and clear. I'm an extremely stable genius. The president said he's not goading Pelosi into impeaching him. I don't think anybody wants to be impeached. The White House is accusing Democrats of being more interested in investigation than legislation. I think it's a, a complete lie that uh, Democrats in Congress think they can do two things at once. So far, we haven't seen them do anything. Nancy Pelosi has had the majority in the House uh, for months and has yet to accomplish a single thing. They haven't gotten, they literally haven't gotten anything done since she's taken over. But that's not true. The House has so far passed dozens of bills, including legislation aimed at gun control and climate change. And just today, lawmakers announced a multi-billion dollar disaster relief package that should make its way through both the House and the Senate and be signed by Mr. Trump in the coming days. Now, as for the president's fight with Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker responded just a short while ago with a tweet. We can put this up on screen saying, a quote, when the extremely stable genius starts acting more presidential, I'll be happy to work with him on infrastructure, trade and other issues. But a source close to the White House said the president is settling on a strategy at this point for dealing with these House Democratic investigations, ramping up the rhetoric to force his adversaries up on Capitol Hill to put up or shut up, this source said, on impeachment. The problem for the president, Wolf, is that Pelosi appears to enjoy the sparring as much as he does, and it's hard to argue that she did not land some punches on the president this week, Wolf. All right, Jim, thank you. Jim Acosta at the White House. I want to bring in our CNN political director, David Chalian. It was a, an extraordinary uh, exchange that they had today. It really was. I mean, sometimes you think you're living on another planet, that this is the president of the United States referring to the Speaker of the House as crazy, which she is not, um, and also this total obsession on the president's part to line up his staff. He's the president of the United States, one of the most powerful people on earth. He's lining up his staff, his advisors, his press secretary, his deputy press secretary, to attest the fact that he was calm. That's not even the point. The point was, it doesn't matter what his demeanor was, he walked out of a meeting and said, we're not going to legislate on the American people's priorities, his priorities, infrastructure, trade, his own agenda items. I'm not moving forward with that until you stop investigating me. That, that's not how the Constitution works. So what, what's going to happen now? I mean, this, this exchange was so bitter, so nasty. What happens? Well, it, what is clear is that Nancy Pelosi is getting under the president's skin. There's no doubt about that. And she, uh, you know, Jim said he, she landed some punches. Uh, she is walking away the victor from these exchanges. And Donald Trump, I, I don't know if he gets this or not, he is helping Nancy, Nancy Pelosi with her own politics with Democrats. Well, just at the beginning of this week, there was this minority of Democrats, a growing chorus, a minority, 
wanting to move to impeachment now, something Nancy Pelosi thinks is politically perilous and does not want to do. And she was going to have to beat back this growing number of people in her caucus. Guess what? She was able to totally do that because of the president's help. He calls her crazy. He, he walks out of a meeting. She goes back to the Democrats on the Hill, and they all rally around her because she just was in a fight with Donald Trump that she won. So he is an unwitting co-conspirator in her effort to unify her caucus. Is President Trump capable now of walking back and saying, you know what, never mind, let's negotiate infrastructure, let's do a deal on infrastructure, drug prices, all the other key issues that affect every American. I have no doubt that he's capable of that. Of course he is. The moment he sees that as actually in his political interest, for some reason he doesn't believe right now that that is in his political interest, the moment he sees that that is, that that's a path, maybe a more secure path to re-election for him, I am sure we would see him change his colors. But d does he think that he's going to get re-elected as, as long as he's battling Democrats like this? He does. I think what you hear in the framing of Nancy Pelosi right now is he has finally decided to sink his teeth into this notion that she is the political opponent to defeat. Before he gets to Biden, before he gets uh, to the 23 Democrats are running, he now is framing an entire political campaign against her because he, I guess he sees that as the first opponent he has to get through in order to get onto his election was the first campaign. day he started calling her uh, exactly. you're crazy, Nancy. Until now, he, no, no adjective for, for Nancy Pelosi. That's Thanks right. very much, David Chalian. Sure. For that analysis, let's go to Capitol Hill right now for more on Speaker Pelosi as the president's rattler in chief. Uh, we're joined by our congressional correspondent, Sunland Sarfati. Sunland Pelosi uh, wasn't just talking to the president uh, at her news conference earlier in the day. She had a message for her own party when it comes to impeachment. Isn't that right? That's right. Well, if she did in that message today was absolutely crystal clear. Nancy Pelosi today uh, saying that she believes that President Trump is crying out for impeachment. And the directive that she's telling her caucus members is very clear. She's saying essentially do not take the bait that he's dangling out there for us. And this is something that privately she has expressed time and time again. But this is certainly coming uh, at a very important moment for her by CNN's count now 34. Five House Democrats have said that they would think now it's the time to start the impeachment inquiry process. Uh, so certainly that is important for her to express to those Democrats and notable that many of the, those Democrats have moved to that position just in the last week alone. So Nancy Pelosi today saying essentially do not be tempted in this moment. And I do think that impeachment is a very divisive place to go in our country. And what we can get the facts to the American people through our investigation, it may take us to a place that is unavoidable in terms of impeachment or not. Uh, but we're not at that place. So the speaker really having to be like a broken record on her strategy here, emphasizing to stay the course, to not put the heart cart before the horse on impeachment and focus uh, right in on investigations and notch those court wins when they can. She uh, notable that she's been celebrating two big uh, court decisions in her favor this weekend and week. And for the moment, she seems to have stabilized the rebellion that we certainly saw bubble up, but not over this week. Wolf. All right, Sunland, thank you. Sunland Sarfati up on Capitol Hill. Joining us now, Congressman Mike Quigley, a Democrat who serves on the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and as you heard, the president says Democrats, and you're a Democrat, Democrats are obstructing the country right now by not working with him on legislation. How do you respond? Uh, there's a lot of bills coming your way, Mr. President. Uh, we're passing a couple bills a week of significant note. Today we dealt with uh, how to help Americans in retirement. So uh, we're willing to sit down and talk about these things. And rather than being petulant and somewhat impulsive, you know, let's sit down and talk about infrastructure. Let's talk about trade and uh, recognize that we can do more than one thing at a time. The president is adamant uh, that he was, uh, in his words, extremely calm when he walked out on those Democratic leaders at the White House yesterday. But is the House Speaker trying to goad the president? I don't think the House Speaker has to go to the president. Uh, I think he's a, a self-winding toy that shoots off occasionally. It, it's unfortunate. Look, I, I think he's somewhat spurred by the court decisions that you just referenced. Those were important, significant decisions by the court, recognizing what the president's starting to understand, that we do have broad authority to do these investigations. And he reminds me something of my... Uh, defense attorney career, when the law's not with you, 
you pound the facts. If the facts aren't with you, you pound the table. He's pounding the table, and part of that's walking out of important meetings.